to the Midnight Show. Welcome to the Bat Cave. Um, today or tonight, we're going to go ASMR style. All right, here we go. It's midweek. How have you been doing? <laughs> I can't do the whole whispering thing, it just makes me laugh. Maybe I'll go a bit quieter and a bit deeper. The funny thing is, as I was growing up, my voice was always a bit higher. Please ignore my uneven makeup. You know, when you're in a rush, just try to do it as perfectly as possible, but sometimes you just can't do it and your makeup is uneven. We're going with it. We're going with the flow. Chill out with me. We're going to go with the flow. And if your makeup is uneven, that's okay. And if you have lipstick on your teeth, that's fine. If you have food stuck in your teeth, I'll let you know. But I can't see you from here. <laughs> okay. Recently, I saw the film. The Count of Monte Cristo, but the really old version, 1937 version. Um, I really enjoyed it. I really surprised myself with it. Um, I don't know if you enjoy watching old films, but I certainly do. Occasionally, I watch an old, really old version. Um, what was that Christmas film? Miracle on 34th Street. Classic. Classic old Christmas film. And it never goes old. Um, always gives me like warm, comfy feelings. Even though and I didn't grow up uh, celebrating Christmas. Right, I'm going to go back to the film. So I'm actually listening to the book, um, The Count of Monte Cristo, and I haven't read it before, I realised, and I'm trying to get to catching up reading or listening to classic books, and I don't have the space for it to buy um, more books, I would love to own more books. Um, do you remember the scene from, um, I'm going black, Beauty and the Beast, and the Beast shows her in this castle, the big, huge library, and the books are lined from head, from the top of the ceiling, to the floor, all around the room. And it's one of the best things in my life. I really love that scene. <laughs> and then she kind of twirls around as if it's like she's in heaven. That's like the best place on earth for me. Especially if there's a fireplace, a place to sit down and write, a place to chill out or meditate. Or just to read books in front of the open fire. I know, I don't know, do you ever imagine in a perfect world, where would you like to live? How would you imagine your perfect home to be? So I kind of imagine having a library like that. And also um, with French windows where you open the top and it goes straight on. And it um, opens up into the garden. Um, you know when people say things like a wild garden or a wild, um, like wilding, like a, na a natural area that needs more trees and grass, things like that. Yeah, I'd like to have... Uh, or maybe a meadow, a garden where 
the grass goes wild, there are wild flowers and huge trees where you could um, picnic underneath it and just chill out, or maybe a pond, maybe a rope swing. That sounds super duper exciting. Um, and in an ideal world, I would love to be writing full time as a writer, which I'm fingers crossed working on at the moment. One of the things I'm doing is I'm typing up all my poems that I've written since I've been living in Brighton and I don't know how many I've written but I've got about 2,000 words typed up so far so I'm going to carry on doing that and hopefully um, my plan is to get it published and I know which publisher I want to submit it to um, so I'm hoping that this would happen and hopefully you know and if it does I will let you know and I hope you'll enjoy it as much as I'm enjoying working on this personal project I'm working on a couple of other things as well but I don't want to keep talking about the same things over and over again uh, so yeah that's what I'm thinking about, that's what I'm doing. What have you been thinking about or doing? Um, it's only been six minutes. I feel like I've been talking a lot. I'm a person who's normally introverted. And it takes a lot for me to talk a lot. Unless I'm talking about an important subject. Or something that's close my heart and I guess if we go back to that ideal world um, if I were able to do more philanthropic things I would love to have my own charity where I can help abused women and children um, maybe have a building or a massive house or big space where they can go to and feel safe and where they can recuperate and then um, maybe there'd be a therapist there that would help them and someone to help them ha find a job and help them get back on their feet um, all the things really that would set them up, set them up to have a beautiful life so that's what I think about a lot of the time obviously we don't live in a perfect world um, life teaches us so many things uh, one of the things this week I've been that I've been thinking about quite a bit or experiencing is um, no matter how I'm feeling that day or what I'm thinking about, or where I am in my own headspace. Life is going to get better. The sun's going to come out again. And I'm going to feel good again. Um, and breathing, just breathing really helps. Um, what makes your life better? What fulfills your life? I, one of the things that I love to do is go into a bookshop and just peruse the books there, look at the covers, read the blurb at the back of the book and ideally again I would love to purchase as many books as I can, um, maybe one day I'll be able to, and maybe I won't, I don't know. It's funny how life works. Um, do you ever stop and think that all those decisions you made in life? Um, some, or sometimes you may not notice how they affect your current life right now. I've been thinking about these things and I haven't noticed that until recently. I've been really mind blown how 
all the life decisions and experiences, whether good or bad, have led to where I am right now, which I find extremely mysterious. Okay, I'm going to leave it for now. I'm going to talk to you again later. Have a good evening.